Hi there and welcome to another Akai tutorial. This video will teach you the basics on how to set up and customize your MPK Mini Plus's control mapping with MPC Beats. Before we dive in, make sure that your MPK Mini Plus is properly connected to your computer via its provided USB cable. Its LED display and button backlights will illuminate when power is supplied. This is also a good time to select the correct program for using your MPK Mini Plus with MPC Beats. The unit's LED display will show you which program is currently active. The default program setting is Program 1, which is called MPC, and this is the one you need to select for linking with MPC Beats. If MPC isn't the currently selected program, press and hold the Program Select button, and tap Pad 1 to load it. Additionally, before attempting to control any external software with the MPK Mini Plus, or changing any of its minimap settings, make sure your unit is running the latest firmware version to avoid any potential issues. Check out our video on how to update the MPK Mini Plus's firmware at the link in the description. So now, let's open up MPC Beats. For this video, I'm going to select the R&B template so we have some preloaded synths and drum kits to play with. First, let's make sure that your MPK Mini Plus is properly set up to control MPC Beats. Open the MPC Beats menu in the top left corner, and go to Help, Open Startup Wizard. The wizard will ask you to connect to your device, which we've already done, so click Next. And on the next screen, we can see that the MPK Mini Plus's factory MIDI mapping has been selected by default. If this mapping isn't selected automatically, load it manually by clicking on the drop-down menu and navigating to Factory, Akai, Akai MPK Mini Plus. Click Next, and you can choose between a simple or advanced workspace layout. I'm just going to pick simple for now. And of course, you can always go back and change between simple and advanced by opening the MPC Beats menu and going to View, Workspace. Now that we've ensured the correct MIDI mapping is loaded, let's set up the MPK Mini Plus's MIDI control settings. Open the MPC Beats Preferences menu by pressing Command Comma on Mac OS or Control Comma on a PC and then click on the MIDI slash sync tab. At the top, under input ports, make sure both track and control are selected. Track will be enabled by default, which is the setting you'll need to control anything in MPC Beats with your MPK Mini Plus, and control needs to be enabled before changing any MIDI mappings. Under output ports, turn on sync and enable MIDI ports when discovered, and turn on sync send, and set the sync output to MIDI clock. This is important for later when we sync the arpeggiator, note repeat, and sequencer functions. So now our MIDI and sync settings are good to go. In my project, I'm going to switch to track view so I can view all currently loaded virtual instruments and audio tracks, and I'll click on one of the tracks with a drum kit. And finally, I'll switch to program edit mode so we can view the drum pads right on screen. Now, when I start tapping the pads on the MPK Mini Plus, we'll see the lower eight pads, A1 through A8, respond in MPC Beats. To access the sounds mapped to the upper eight pads, tap the Bank AB button on your MPK Mini Plus, which will light up green when you're using Bank B, and now your eight pads will correspond to pads A9 through A16. What we're seeing here are the default MPC Beats MIDI control settings for the MPK Mini Plus. Nearly every built-in drum kit you load in MPC Beats will assign a kick on pad 1, a snare on pad 2, usually a closed and open hi-hat pair on pads 3 and 4, and more kit-specific percussion, synth hits, and sound effects on the remaining pads. So now we know the default MIDI setup, but what if you want to create your own custom MIDI mapping? Maybe having your kick on pad 1 and your snare on pad 2 isn't intuitive for you, and you want to make it so whenever you load a drum kit, your snare is always on pad 1 and the kick on pad 2 instead. Well, let's learn how to do that. In the bottom right corner, click on the MIDI Learn icon. Then, under Global, click Enable, then click on this little menu to the right of the drop-down menu and select New MIDI Map. Now you have a fresh slate and can assign your pads however you wish. So, at the top, click Learn. Pad 1 is currently selected in MPC Beats, which means whatever pad I hit on the MPK Mini Plus will now be assigned to Pad 1 in MPC Beats. I want that snare drum on Pad 1, so I'm going to tap Pad 2 on my MPK Mini Plus, 
and now the MPK Mini Plus's second pad is assigned to pad 1 in MPC Beats. Conversely, since I want the kick on pad 2, I'm going to click pad 2 in MPC Beats, then tap pad 1 on the MPK Mini Plus. So now, if I unselect Learn and try my newly assigned pads, my new layout is now active. Now, of course, the pads aren't the only parameter on your MPK Mini Plus you can change. If you click the View drop-down menu, you can see that every knob, button, and pad on your device can be assigned to whichever parameter in MPC Beats you want to control. This allows you to customize your MPK Mini Plus's layout from front to back and create a setup that's completely tailored to your creative process. To change a mapping, simply right-click on it and click Clear MIDI Mapping. Now that parameter is free to be assigned however you wish. If you don't want to create an entirely new MIDI mapping from scratch, and just want to modify a few parameters of the default MPK Mini Plus mapping, click the MIDI Mapping drop-down menu and go to Factory, Akai, Akai MPK Mini Plus, then click the little menu to the right, and click Duplicate. Next, reopen the MIDI Mapping drop-down, and mouse over User, and scroll down until you find Akai MPK Mini Plus Copy. Now feel free to modify whichever settings you want. Now, let's quickly learn how to sync your MPK Mini Plus's arpeggiator, note repeat, step editor, and live sequencer functions with MPC Beats. It's important to link these functions with your MPC Beats project so its tempo is synced with your project tempo. Otherwise, they'll sound out of time with the rest of your project. To do this, make sure that in the MPC Beats MIDI slash sync tab, sync send is turned on and the sync output is set to MIDI clock, like we covered earlier. Next, on the MPK Mini Plus, press and hold the shift button and turn knob K6. Then turn it once to the right, so the LED display changes the BPM setting to external. Now, your MPK Mini Plus's clock is synced to your MPC Beats project tempo, whether you're using the arpeggiator, note repeat, the step editor, or live sequencer, the BPM settings in all of these features will correspond to the BPM you've selected in MPC Beats. Remember that in order to hear your keyboard notes or drum hits being sequenced through these functions, you'll need to be playing back audio in MPC Beats. If the MPC Beats playhead is paused or stopped, you won't hear any notes or drum hits play. For a more in-depth explanation on how to use the arpeggiator and sequencer to create and record sequences and arpeggiated synth riffs, check out our video on this topic at the link down in the description. So, now you know the basics of controlling MPC Beats with your MPK Mini Plus. For further assistance and support with using the MPK Mini Plus, head over to akaipro.com forward slash support, where you'll find the Akai Pro knowledge base and access to Akai Pro's technical support team if needed. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun using MPC Beats with your new MPK Mini Plus. Music